can I use a lactate meter sparingly? Absolutely. In fact, I was just going to talk about that. So this is what I use to check my lactate. Now, if you followed me at all, you know I'm a numbers guy. I'm all, you know, I've got two glucose meters on. I'm always doing something crazy. Um, and I check my lactate after every single zone two ride. And since I'm doing four of them a week, and I've been doing them for almost three years, and I write down every single day, I write down, this was my power, this was my heart rate, this was my lactate. You can imagine how many of these cards I've got stored up. Do you need to do that? Of course not. Um, for one thing, it's a stupidly expensive pastime. I don't remember how much this thing cost, but it wasn't cheap, it was probably 200, 250 bucks. But what really gets you is these damn strips, which it's, they're four bucks a pop because it's like a hundred bucks for 25 of these. So, you know, I'm wasting 16 bucks a week just checking my lactate. But why do I do it? Well, I do it because I've learned so much about how understanding where my zone two is on any given day is a function of my power. In other words, how much power am I putting out on the bike? My heart rate, how I feel, how rested I am, um, where I am physiologically in my stress cycle. So am I overtrained or undertrained? Uh, frankly, even my glucose level tends to play a role. And so uh, just, just to give you two examples, um, the last two workouts I did, so today's and Sunday's, had the exact same power to the watt, the exact same heart rate to the watt. On Sunday, my lactate was 2.1 at the end. What does that mean? That means I was actually a little bit outside of my zone too. And the funny thing is, in retrospect, I kind of felt a little bit tired. Today, I thought, I'm going to see how I feel, but I was ready to bring it down a notch. And by the end of the workout, I was like, no, I feel fine. And I was at 1.4 millimole today. And that told me, hey, rely a little bit more on how you feel. You could have pushed the wattage a bit higher today. So, um, if you let, so, so let's put it aside for a moment. If you want to use lactate monitoring, you're going to get the best insight possible. What if you don't? Uh, either because you don't feel like wasting the money or you don't like poking your fingers or whatever. Then what I think you do is you start to triangulate between heart rate and perceived exertion. I always think a great place to start is where Phil Maffetone has people start for the MAF, which is 80% of maximum heart rate. But I want to make sure that people understand when we say maximum heart rate, we mean actual maximum heart rate, not predicted. So if you want to know your maximum heart rate, actually do some crunching and munching. Like you, you got to actually um, go out there and figure out what your maximum heart rate is. And when you know that number, um, you know, doing a treadmill test or some sort of exertion test, uh, then what you do is um, you take 80% of that and say, I'm going to start there. As far as exertion goes, uh, I would say, you know, I can mostly nasal breathe in zone two, but frankly, it's a bit uncomfortable. But I certainly am not going, you know, the way I am when I'm doing something all out. So I can mostly nasal breathe and I can talk but I just don't want to. Um, someone asked me if I was gonna do this one hour session whilst doing zone two. And I actually thought about it, but I was like, eh, it's just, it's not gonna be that much fun for me. Not that this is that much fun, but anyway, you know what I mean? Uh, it, it would just be t too much of, um, too much of a, a stress. Whereas you could at least entertain that idea. Um, so, what I would say in the best state is maybe periodically check your lactate like once a month, once a week, um, and learn to rely on those other signs and, 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 and things such as your heart rate and your uh, perceived exertion. Um, duh, 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 duh. Okay, so I think Let's just start taking some of the live questions now. I do have more questions here, but let's, um, let's, oh boy, there's some really other good ones. Okay, anyway, let's just, let's just see what people are asking. Okay, um, 
how it how is it 80 percent my garmin at zone two is 60 to 70 percent this is confusing okay so good question so heart rate monitors when they tell you their zones they might not be they're probably not referring to the zones we're talking about your garmin might be working off the seven zones that are cycling power zones the ftp zones and you're absolutely right an ftp zone two is well below a lactate zone two. In fact, um, and I'm very familiar with those seven zones because that's what we trained in cycling. And I know that my cycling zone two, uh, sorry, my current zone two uh, would have placed me sort of low zone three on the cycling one. So again, what I would say is always discard the definitions of what everybody else is telling you, zone two, zone three, it's irrelevant. Call this a new, you know, a new thing and, and let's just deal with that. All right, I need to lose 145 pounds. What do I need to do to kick my ass into gear? I don't really know, but I think zone two would definitely play a role in that. Do you recommend, uh, I can't read, boy, these are moving too quick. How do you find zone two or watts on a treadmill? Great question. Okay, um, it's really the same way. So let's just talk about how you first make a stab at your zone two. Um, if you're trying to titrate that level up. So on a treadmill, what I recommend is not doing the flat setting and going as fast as you can go, but instead using an incline and a brisk walk. So um, what I recommend is it depends on, you know, your knees and your fitness and things like that, but it would be, you know, sort of start at 6% and three miles per hour. Um, now, I wouldn't even test a level or make an assessment until I'm at least 15 minutes of steady state. Um, and then I would do, if, again, I think at the outset you just have to accept using lactate on some level. Um, and then I would do the check and then adjust accordingly. But I, I would give myself a minimum of 15 minutes between making any changes. Um, I do want to make one other point that, I, that I, is worth making for anybody who's going to be using one of these devices, which is Unlike glucose, which when you check glucose using, you know, a device like this with a glucose strip, it's more than sufficient to just take an alcohol pad, wash off your hand and poke it. But lactate uh, is not really something that comes off with alcohol. It needs soap and water. So um, when you're testing lactate, you have to be able to wash your hands with soap and water. And when I was early on um, doing this testing, I would actually keep a super, I would keep two rags in buckets next to my bike on the stand. And one was like a super soapy one. And then one was just a clean one. And so when I was on the bike having to test, I would ride, do the, clean my hands. It was soapy and do the whole thing. And so whether you're on a bike or you're on a treadmill, you're at the outset going to probably have to do that if you're doing a graded test to find your level. Um, the other thing to note if you're not doing it on a device that for which uh, watts is spit out is pay attention to the METs or metabolic equivalents. So on a treadmill or on a Stairmaster or something like that, you'll often see METs spit out as the equivalent. Um, and of course, there's a conversion between them, but it doesn't really matter for the sake of this.